this is my shop. This is 252 square feet of a two car garage, typical of most hobby woodworkers especially, but even those of us that are, have turned somewhat pro in our homes. What's going on guys, I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Of course, today we're doing the 2020 shop door. I haven't done this for a little while. Now the shop is not exactly clean right this second. It's been worse, but it's definitely been better. So I haven't actually cleaned up for the shop tour, so I apologize for that, but this is a little impromptu. We have a lot of new subscribers over the last like six months or so, and I thought it would be appropriate to show you guys around and see where exactly it is that I work in one whole scene as opposed to bits and pieces. Now I'm gonna start the shop tour on the other side of this plastic wall. This is a plastic wall that we put up when we originally redid the shop and that keeps the shop stuff separate from the garage type stuff. So we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna show you what that's all about. All right, so this is the storage side and like I said, it's a mess. So originally when we put all these shelves that you can probably barely see in here, uh, we put them in and the idea was is that that summer or fall or something we were going to organize all this stuff. We've got all these totes here that's supposed to go on the shelves and it was all supposed to be organized and of course, like everybody else, that just doesn't happen. Um, but essentially what we did is we put in this plastic wall. This is just regular plastic, you know, construction grade visqueen. And we put this entire wall up here. I taped it off with just masking tape, blue masking tape, painter's tape at the top and on the sides. And then I put duct tape on the bottom because of the traffic. And it was sort of experimental at the time, but it's held up for the last roughly two years just fine. And so I don't really feel I need to upgrade it at all. Now the whole thing came in this kit. I actually still have the box. And I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but it's this zip wall. And I believe I got it at Lowe's, but I'll, I'll try and find a link for it. Um, to put down in the description if any of you guys can find a uh, benefit out of this, but basically it comes with these four rods. It's kind of like a shower curtain rod only, vertical instead of horizontal. And it's really easy to install. You just fold the plastic up over a little clip that's at the top, put it right up against the ceiling, put it back down onto the ground and just tighten it up a little bit. It's good to go. I have, uh, I only use the one kit, so I have the four rods and those are, that's, that's the wall. That's the whole wall. So again, I'll leave a link down there for you guys that if you can find use out of that. Um, it's been great. I absolutely love this thing. Uh, it comes with a zipper. Actually, it comes with two zippers so that you have a door and you can roll that up and hook it up permanently or you can just leave it. I used to zip it and unzip it all the time. I've since then got a little lazy with it, but that's also because it's just a convenience of being able to just run in and out as I need to, but it does keep the dust out of this side. Of course, I've got some surfaces here that have some dust on it, but that's because I rarely keep the door closed all the way. Other than that, it works really well. Of course, it limits how much we can keep over here, which is why this keeps getting overflowing with stuff, but it does allow for me to have complete separation between garage storage and the shop. Probably the biggest drawback overall is that because it's not an actual framed wall, I don't have wall storage. So everything has to be that's put up against this plastic wall has to be stuff that doesn't need to use the wall to operate. So no shelves, no leaning against the wall. I can't do anything like that, which is sort of a bummer because this wall is plastic. The wall across from it is a garage door. One of the walls has a big window in it and that leaves me with just the one wall for any kind of storage system. So that's the only drawback of it. But again, it keeps the dust out, it keeps stuff separated and it keeps garage stuff here shop stuff there and it's completely separate which is the intent of the wall that's why we did it to begin with and for that it's actually worked really well so now we're going to hop back over to the other side i'll start kind of showing you guys around the shop itself all right i'm going to start with the center of the room because i almost forgot this in the last shop tour so this is my assembly table workbench this is kind of the do all center of the shop and once i get a new table saw here in the next month or two we're actually going to sort of dismantle this and reuse the material that it's made out of and make a new outfeed table for that saw, assembly table, that sort of thing. So it's served its purpose, but it's, it needs to go. It's actually the top isn't flat, which makes assembly of certain things really sort of a pain in the butt. The pipe clamp vise is fairly new. I think I've done this within the last probably two, three months. It works great. 
It's not perfect, but it works just fine. This is similar to the Jay Bates style pipe clamps he used to put on his benches. And for using a bunch of scrap material and a couple pipe clamps, it works absolutely amazing. Now to install it, I had to get rid of this front skirt that was on here and sort of recess some stuff in here and get rid of a little bit of the French cleat system that's on here, which I'll show you guys here in just a second. What I really like about it though, uh, design wise as far as the bench is concerned is I have storage for clamps and stuff so on this side I actually have um, a lot of my you know the Harbor Freight bar clamps and uh, f-style clamps down here in the center hopefully you guys can see in there but probably not in the center is open and so I have a lot of room for uh, storage for like small pieces of sheet goods on this side and that's the other cool thing about this bench is that I can actually turn it around. So I can spin this and move this or wheel it outside if I needed the extra space. On this side, I have the, um, the K5 uh, pocket hole jig from Craig along with buckets for screws. These are bins that attach via French cleat. Uh, so it's, I have the same thing up here, going back to the whole French cleat thing. Um, there's a lot of stuff in my shop bins and whatnot that are um, French cleat system. So I can take this and hook it up here, grab the screws that I need when I'm done with it. I can actually just put it back where it goes and it's home. This is the same way. So anywhere that I need to move or relocate, this of course sits flat on the table when I need it. When I don't need it, I can just take it, hang it back up there and it's stored underneath out of the way. So that part of the design I really like. Um, again, I have some more clamps and whatnot up here, but it just allows for greater storage area that's sort of condensed and out of the way. Now, one thing I will say is like when I'm sitting at the bench and I'm doing, you know, some sort of intricate thing where I'm going to need to sit for a while or something or planning something out, um, some of this stuff does get in the way as far as hitting my knees on it, but it's a small price to pay for the functionality of it. This is really nice. I have these little totes here. These totes can be hung up on the side, which allows me to clear space off of here without having to gather all this stuff up and set it to the side. And so this has been very beneficial. Um, I use this stuff, like I say, all the time and it works really great. So the other two things in the center of the shop is my shop vac dust collection and my table saw. This is a rigid 14 gallon vacuum with a dust stopper uh, bucket topper. So this is sort of a cyclone type of deal. You would have a hose comes out from this side, plugs into whatever tool it is. So I typically will hook this up to the um, table saw or I'll hook it up to the band saw typically. And that'll give me some sort of dust collection coming out of there. It sucks it into this. It'll all swirl back around. And then of course the suction goes back through this. But because of that, it actually fills this five gallon bucket up with all the dust and debris, keeping it out of the shop vac. And that's really nice to have because one, you don't end up with a whole bunch of debris shooting back out the back side of it, but it also saves my filters. It keeps only the fine particles in here. This is also a lot easier to dump. So when I need to dump this, I just take this lid off, dump the bucket, however I'm gonna do that, and then I put the lid back on and we're ready to rock and roll again. Once in a while, I'll take a peek inside of here and I'll knock the dust off the filter or change it or whatever I need to. You can also go a step farther, um, at least with these particular shop vacs and get a bag that goes in there as well. And so that'll double up on the dust savings. This is not a permanent solution. This is just sort of a plywood cart that I made, again, out of some scrap material back when I redid the shop to begin with. Uh, it works, just has a handle up here and I wheel it around but it does take up quite a bit of floor space. I've seen some where they've made sort of a pipe uh, system here. It attaches to the vacuum, comes up, and then the dust, pour, the, the uh, bucket would be up top. That would work great, except for that this vacuum doesn't really let me do that just because of how it's constructed. I, I don't really know how to explain it. Um, but I, will, I would like to come up with a different system for this. What I'd rather do is just get a decent dust collection system. I've heard really good things for years about the Harbor Freight system, so I might kind of look into that unless I come across a better deal somewhere else on, on another brand. Um, but for now, this is what I have. For the table saw, um, I will touch basis on this just because I know a lot of you guys have this saw. So this is, 
I don't remember the brand, uh, I remember the brand, but I don't remember the model number on this right away, but a lot of you guys have this saw. Um, it's a 10 inch contractor style saw, job site saw. So you can fold this up, wheel it around. That part has been great because in such a small space, you need that portability and maneuverability. Um, however, I've completely outgrown this saw. The top is not even kind of flat. I mean, you could probably pick little portions that are, but it sags going through the middle, it sags going um, through the middle both directions. So when you get a piece of lumber in there, it starts out straight and then it kind of bends in towards the blade and then it bends back out. Uh, and it's not just the flex in the throat plate, it's actually the table itself. If you throw a straight edge on here, you can see a ton of light underneath there. It's gotta go. Like I said before, we're gonna get a new saw in here real soon. It's gonna be a bigger saw, a little bit more permanent, although it will be on wheels. Um, that'll replace this. I have never had other issues with it. The fence comes out of adjustment once in a while. For what it is, for the price you pay for it, it's a good little machine, but it's not intended to be here in the shop. It's not supposed to do fine furniture and detail work and stuff like that, but I've made it do that for quite some time. So um, I'm not knocking on the saw completely. I've probably had it for about four years and I've just honestly kind of worked it to death. It's just sort of met its max life expectancy. Works great for ripping down sheet goods, obviously in smaller pieces, but I've cut larger pieces on here too. It's just, you work with what you have. So not a bad saw, just not the saw for me anymore. So now moving to the wall, the plastic wall, okay? So the door is right there, and then as we move this way. Um, this is my bandsaw, and I absolutely love it. It's a 14-inch bandsaw. It's a Rikon 10 326, if you need to know. Um, this thing is amazing, and I originally got it for the resaw capacity right off the shelf. I don't have to put a riser or anything on the back here. It's just under 13-inch max resaw capacity right off the, the floor. So. Um, that has been more than what I even need it for, but it's nice to know I have it if I need it. Uh, I also really appreciate the fence that's on here. It's a two position fence, so I have the fence upright for you know ripping projects and whatnot. And then I have, I can move it and lay it flat so that if I still need the fence, but I need to be able to get my hands around stuff, I don't have this big bulky fence. So it just folds flat and is still usable. Um, it's a bandsaw. I mean, there's not a lot to talk about it, uh, it's provided me with plenty of power. It has always worked just how I needed it to. Uh, one thing that I did was I made this little magnetic box and this is just to catch pieces, little small pieces, especially when you're doing like scroll work and stuff and you wanna scoot those off. A lot of times they'll fall off the edge here. Well, with this, they'll fall off into this little bin and then I can dump that bin later. And it looks small, but it actually holds quite a bit. And then of course, it just magnets, uh, magnetically sticks to the side of the table here so I can quickly dump that out if I need to. It actually holds quite a bit. It takes a while before I need to dump it. I think if I was going to be doing a lot of production type work on it, I would turn that sort of into a chute that just goes straight down into a bucket. But it keeps the mess up, so I'm not constantly having to pick stuff up around the bandsaw. Um, I wanted to touch basis on the now famous circle cutting jig. I know a lot of you guys have seen the video uh, that I made uh, on how to build this or have made it yourselves and I wanted to kind of give you guys an update while I'm at it. Uh, this thing's been perfect. I, I take it out and it lives just behind the saw back here when I don't need it. But um, this thing has worked perfect. It's uh, done everything that I've needed to do. It hasn't fallen out of cal calibration. And then one thing, it was the biggest sort of hot topic in that video is that it can it had this kind of like a tilt to it that hasn't affected me whatsoever um, I do plan on remaking this a lot of you guys have asked me if I have plans for it because all bandsaws are different it's hard for me to come up with plans that fit all machines but one of these days I do plan on remaking this maybe using some different hardware not that there's anything wrong with the way that it is now um, but just to maybe make it easier for you guys to build also um, yeah, it's been a great, a great, a great jig. And like I say, the wobbling part hasn't made a difference at all. And that's mainly because whenever you're cutting, you're cutting on this half of it. And so you're not going to get a wobble until probably, probably clear out here, in which case you'd have a radius of 
probably about 24, 26 inches. Well, that's a pretty big circle already. So um, since most of the things that I do are under that, it's been fine. All the weight gets pushed right here and it, it works great. Now moving one machine over is the drill press. Uh, this is a drill press I've had for probably 20 years. It's an old Delta. I don't even, well, it's uh, 17965 is what it says here, but I'm sure that this model is uh, non-existent by now. Um, it's a floor stand, okay? So I have a ton of um, capacity out of this machine. It works great. Uh, it's always been a good machine and it's a little being bang, banged up from different moves and stuff like that but it's been a great machine the only issue I have with it now is that the start stop switch is a little goofy so I'll turn it on it turns on fine but then when I get some pressure down into the wood it likes to kick itself off and I have to reach back over and mess with it a little bit it's kind of a nuisance it's not necessarily anything that's um, a big problem and definitely not uh, a slander on the, the tool or the company itself because it's been great. It's, it's like I say, it's always worked. Um, over here next to it, uh, because I don't have any storage on the machine itself, I actually have more French cleat systems. So this is just a tray. Got a bunch of sawdust in here now, but this is this holds a lot of Forstner bits and goofy sized things. And I have another French cleat hanger right here if you guys can see that and so I can just set this right here and now I have all the stuff that I need that I usually grab I also have another small French cleat um, this is for my brad point bits that of course I use all the time and so same thing I can just set those right there but what's really nice is if I don't need them there if I need to remove these for any particular reason I can move them anywhere else and get them out of the way. So that's been really helpful to have next to this. But again, when I start redesigning things and making more furniture for the shop, those things might sort of go away and be stored in a cabinet underneath or something. I don't know yet. I haven't quite figured that out. Um, I made sort of a table with a fence for this. And this actually works surprisingly well. So all this is is uh, make sure you guys can see this. I have a knob on this side. It's just screws in and out. And then I have a regular spring clamp, spring clamp on the other side. And then that allows this to pivot. By allowing this to pivot, um, I can move it to wherever I need it to go, clamp it back in place, and it stays still. It doesn't move at all. I have a little stop block that I made that goes inside of this track, so I can move this stop block up and down as necessary and it works again one day i would like to maybe build a new top just to do it as a project but i haven't really needed to um, prior to making this i had nothing i just had like a sheet of plywood on the regular um, cast table and that was it so this works really great it has a piece of melamine as the table and then it has three pieces of tempered hardboard on top which can be removed if i need to but typically i will put some sort of a scrap piece of plywood or something up here uh, to prevent things from blowing out and also prevent it from chewing up the table. So I'm sure that makes sense to you guys. Other than that, that's the drill press. It's been a great machine and I'm really glad that I have it. All right, so moving on from the drill press, we have this whole wall basically. Um, this wall is where my miter stations are and it's also where I have a little bit of lumber storage up here. And honestly, I just went to the store and bought these metal L brackets to put this stuff up here and screwed them into the studs. They hold enough. Obviously, I don't have a ton of space to store things anyway, so it holds just enough to get me by. And that can be condensed and reorganized if I needed to put a bunch more stuff in here anyways. Uh, this is an old Delta 10 inch saw that I have had probably as long as I've had the drill press. Um, still works great. I had to upgrade at some point because I had a job where I needed a 12 inch miter saw and so this is when I got the DeWalt. It's not a slider. I didn't have room in my last shop for a slider and I've always been on the fence with sliders anyways because they allow for a lot more movement and play than the non-sliding saws. Uh, but mostly it's because I didn't have space. So I do have a 12 inch saw here, I have the 10 inch saw here, and then I have the radial arm saw. The radial arm saw does work, but you never see me use it in videos because um, I need to finish making the 
table for it and get it all dialed in and I need to get a blade for it. And the blades for those, it's a special size. I don't remember what it is right now, but they're not cheap and it's not necessary. I'd rather spend the money in other places. But the saw is in really good shape. It's 1956-ish, I believe, if I remember right. Uh, DeWalt radial arm saw. Uh, it's probably a little underpowered for bigger jobs, but it, it works great. It functions fine. And if I was to plug it in, it would turn on and work. It's just without a decent blade, of course, I'm not gonna use it. The idea here with this whole back row was to have a different blade at each saw. So on this one, I have sort of a finer tooth, nicer crosscut blade. On here, we have more of a general purpose blade. And then the idea was down here to have something that instead of always having to go to the table saw to square up the end of like a, a panel glue up or something like a cutting board, I could bring it over here and just slice an end off and then turn it around, slice the other end off. Uh, again, I didn't really end up going that route. Maybe one of these days we'll get there. Uh, but that was kind of the idea behind all this. Um, underneath, I have a small Bosch router table. It's the only router table I have. When I get a new saw, I plan on putting a router table with a lift into the table saw extension. And so that'll all change. Um, I just have buckets for like garbage and stuff. And then over here, if you guys can even see this, um, I have my compressor and it's a twin style compressor. I've had it for a really long time. Uh, it just lives on sort of a mobile cart. So when I need to drain the tanks, I can just wheel it right outside the door here, drain the tanks, bring it back in and it fits perfectly inside that cubby. There's a lot of dead space under there though, is one thing that I discovered. This was all sort of concocted sort of last minute when I redid the shop a couple years ago. Over on the garage side of the garage, we, they had built a closet in there. When we tore all that closet out, I reused the studs and that's what I built this whole thing out of. Well, I'd like to kind of do cabinets. If I do cabinets, then I can actually have a lot more storage and organization because right now it's just a whole bunch of empty space. And I realize that now, but obviously cabinets aren't cheap to build. So um, I think we will do that at some point, but for right now, this has worked pretty well. Although I admit, I don't use all three saws. I almost only use the 12 inch DeWalt. So I might kind of take another look at that down the road. So over here in this corner, I have the DeWalt DW734 planer. This is an amazing tool. When I first got a planer, I believe I got a Porter cable or a Delta. Horrible snipe issues. Just, it was just not a high quality machine. So I took it back. I spent the money. I got the 734. I haven't looked back. I absolutely love this thing. The only thing is it's super loud. So that's one thing. It also draws a lot of power. So when I use this on the same circuit with the shop vac to have dust collection for it, it ends up tripping the breaker. So uh, you kind of have to have two separate circuits for that, but it does work extremely well. Very limited uh, snipe issues, almost none. Uh, it's just, it's been a really good machine. Very easy to take care of, very easy to change the blades out in it. It's been great. Um, the other thing I have, if you guys can see over here, is this little six inch bench top Porter cable jointer. Um, it's worked fine. The biggest issue that I have with it is just capacity. So at some point when I figure out how to condense all this stuff and, and redo this again, I would like to get at least an eight inch floor stand joiner. That would make my life so much easier. I could tackle a lot bigger projects that I kind of pass up on now because it's just so much of a pain to get jointed edges without needing a jig or some other thing. I would love to have just a larger joiner. I could just come in here and just do what I need to do. Uh, but other than that, if this thing has had sort of mixed reviews, I've seen some people say they hate it. I've never had a problem with it. You just have to make sure that you get the, the fence and table dialed in together. And after that, just let it run. There's way better tools on the market, but again, they don't give these things away. So for the price, I think it's a decent tool. Like I say, I'm just maxed out capacity wise. Um, I think the only other thing I have over here is just some shop jigs and stuff like that. So there's nothing really to see over there. So moving over into this next corner, because there's nothing against the garage door, I have this, this belt uh, slash spindle sander. So this belt can be taken off of here and a spindle can be put on. I really like this thing. It vibrates quite a bit, but I think that's just sort of the inherent nature of the tool itself. But 
a little spendy. I think it's a couple hundred bucks, but it's well worth the money. It's a pretty popular tool. A lot of people end up having this one. Um, I don't know. It works. It works great. It's gotten me out of a jam quite a few times. I just have it on this little uh, sort of old dresser type of thing that we had. We were going to get rid of it. I took the drawers out, beefed it up a little bit. And then underneath there, I have some other random tools like the router, heat gun, a couple little saws and stuff like that. Just, just, I just use it for storage. I have a small uh, scrap bin over here. A lot of times I'll put my half sheets of plywood and stuff back here to kind of keep them tucked uh, out of the way. We have the Paint cabinet, this is another one of those things that a lot of people look at and they say, oh, do you have plans for it? What do you, what do you, you know, how'd you make it? I didn't do a video on this. This was something um, sort of experimental at the time, but basically it's meant to hold quartz up here, quartz and pints, and then in the back you have storage for the thinner stuff. So the spray paint size bottles and uh, mineral spirits and stuff like that. It works great. I'm going to redo it. I'm actually gonna redo it so that it has two doors that come out this way instead of the one door. I don't know why I didn't think of that to begin with. Once I redo it, I will make a video on it and I'll have plans for you guys because I know, like I said, a lot of people have asked about this. It's a great storage solution because this stuff is stuff that ends up just everywhere. And that's how it was for me before I made this cabinet. The only issue is that the more you collect, the more cabinet space you need. So at some point, you know, you might need to make a second one. But even if you did that, just being able to house all this stuff and have it layered is super beneficial. Um, I think that might be it for this corner. We'll sort of move on to under the window here. All right, so now we've come full circle. Literally, uh, we're back to the, the door that's in the wall, the plastic wall here. Um, and this time of day, about four o'clock, it gets really bright into this window. The sun is finally coming in through this window. So I ap apologize for the bright uh, light here. Basically what I have here is I have a dresser that used to be my wife's. Again, we brought it out into the shop and decided to use it for um, a piece of shop furniture. So in these drawers, I have all kinds of storage for stuff just like you normally would. I also have, and I've never talked about this, I don't think, but I have an old lathe back here. So eventually we'll make a stand for that lathe and we'll start getting into uh, wood turning and stuff, which is something I've had very limited experience with. Um, I have the, one of the only spots in my garage where I have actual wall space for storage. I have this French cleat wall. This is a sanding station that I made a long time ago. I made a video on it. If you watch it, I apologize. It's probably not that great, but it was one of my earlier videos. Um, as far as the project itself goes though, the sanding station works amazing. I have all my uh, discs on the side here. I have storage up top for the machines themselves. I have all my sandpaper in here organized by grit. Um, the micro mesh is in here, steel wool, even the Nylox brushes are up here. And so this is a great storage solution for that kind of stuff. It's all easily accessible and easily readable. So I can just look up here and say, oh, I'm running to the store and I'm low on whatever it is, pick it up while I'm out, which is nice. Um, and then down the wall, I just have various different French cleat storage systems. I have some to hold tape. I have one that holds my drills and you know, just random stuff, whatever it is that I need to store. This bench is actually the first bench I made in our old shop. And when we redid everything, I took this and sort of rebuilt it. I put a shelf up top so I had somewhere to put this light. Uh, I have all my nails and brads and stuff up top. Again, I have more French cleat storage here so that these are a little more uh, accessible. This is some of my more commonly used things. And I have a bunch of junk up here because like most surfaces, you end up just collecting junk. And like I say, I didn't, uh, I didn't clean up before I shot this shop tour. Um, it, it does give me ample storage underneath though for brad nailers, finish nailers, stuff like that. Um, just some other random odds and ends that are down here. Ironically, I don't have a lot in this shop that is garbage. I don't, I've tried to maintain only keeping stuff in here that I absolutely need, that I actually use all the time and tried to, believe it or not, take sort of a minimalistic approach about it. And the reason is, is because I don't have a lot of shop space to begin with. So anything that I collect in here that's extra or garbage or junk is, it's only hurting me in the long run. So um, basically I just need to find storage, better storage solutions. So Hopefully the next time we do a shop tour, 
things will look completely different. Like I said, I'm getting a new saw. We're gonna put a router table in that. I'm gonna start making a lot of different shop furniture. We may or may not put cabinets over on that side. I'm not sure yet. Depends on sort of the cost and whatnot of what that's gonna take. But that's it. This is my shop. Um, I probably glazed over a few things and I apologize for that. Again, this was totally impromptu. There's not a whole lot of camera movie magic or or editing that's gonna be involved in this thing is sort of just a raw walk around the shop with me. So if you have questions, make sure you leave a comment or a suggestion, or if you have a, a thought on any of the tools that you saw or a question on any of the tools that you saw, let me know. I will leave a link to a few different things, but especially I do also have an Amazon store where most of the tools and stuff that's in here can be found. So if you guys are interested in anything like that, definitely take a look at that out. Again, I'll leave a link down in the description. Other than that, Thanks so much for watching this video, you guys. As always, I'll see you in the next one.